Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today on using simulation for sustainable design. Uh, go to the next slide there, Shaquille. My name is Adam Mentor. I'm the Sustainability Education Program Manager here at Autodesk. I'm joined by my colleague, Adam Kenbarg, the Sustainability Education Fellow. And uh, direct from France, where it's very late right now, we have Shaquille Mirza, an Autodesk Technical Consultant. Um, and he's going to tell us a lot more about the simulation tools. He's a, he's a real expert in them. Um, I wanted to quickly tell you guys to ask questions on Facebook if you have one. Um, you'll see here the, these little screen grabs that Shaquille's going to show you um, how to check in and chat uh, using that feature. Uh, we do have the benefit of being live here, so uh, if questions do come in, we'll, we'll hear them uh, along the way and we'll be happy to answer them. So I wanted to um, give you guys a quick introduction. I'm basically going to uh, introduce the topic and then let um, Adam and Shaquille go into a lot more depth about it. So um, we're talking about simulation and its use in sustainable design, which um, inherently pretty much comes down to being efficient with how you use materials and how you use energy. So an example uh, that you could say is sustainable design is Boeing's new 787 consumes 20% less fuel than a similarly sized plane. Uh, so other people might say airline travel itself is not sustainable. Um, that point's debatable and you should certainly think of other alternatives to travel um, and other alternatives to airline travel. That said, if we're going to fly around the world and we do a lot of it, um, the more that we can do to save fuel, the better. So how can simulation help you solve problems like this, make a more a fuel efficient airplane? So you need to get this thing moving. Um, and so Newton's laws of motion tell us that uh, F equals MA is the is a equation that governs how much force you need to accelerate something. Um, so the more the more that you can do to reduce the mass, the less uh, energy you're going to have to use to get this thing uh, off the ground and then landed. And once it's in the air, to keep it moving, um, the force is proportional to something called the uh, drag coefficient and uh, and you'll see, we'll see how so, some of these tools for fluid dynamics can help you optimize that number. So uh, go to the next slide there. So a couple of the tools that we're going to be talking about are FEA and CFD. So FEA is, stands for finite element analysis, and it can help you understand mechanical stresses and deflections due to forces. That can help you make robust and lightweight products. CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics, and that helps you model fluid flow and heat transfer, and that can help you do things like reduce drag in this example of, uh, of an airplane. Um, go to the next slide there. Um, it's important to realize that this is complicated stuff, especially with fluids, um, and especially with an application like, like aeronautics. You know, it's not just the coefficient of drag that you're working to optimize, it's, it's lift, and there's like fluid flow can get very complicated. So it's important to understand what you can optimize in the software and what you need to do physical prototyping on. Uh, and often it's a combination of the two. Um, and the software can be very helpful with um, iterative design changes. And we're gonna see some examples of that from Shaquille and Adam later. Um, and so this is a little preview of one of the things that you'll see is lightweighting this part. They moved from an aluminum for the steering pedal on this uh, cool ultralight airplane uh, to a plastic pedal. And so that uh, moving from aluminum to plastic required certain design changes, but the goal was to uh, make it more lightweight. Uh, and so we'll, we'll talk more about that particular example later. But now I'm going to hand it over to Adam Kenvark, who's going to tell you more about some of the basics of, uh, of this stuff. And I think that hopefully through this webinar, the message that we're trying to get across is that you can use simulation to optimize energy and material use in your next design project. And we'll have a whole host of resource, resources on both the sustainability workshop and other websites to help you do that. And Adam's gonna take it from here. 